Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board's Water Wednesdays webcast. As always, I am here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. And we Hi, can't everyone. forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica. And today, people, we have back on the show Senator Jeff Irwin, who has been a champion of the people and here today to talk to us about the polluter pay bill. Thank you, Senator Irwin, for coming on the show, and we really appreciate your being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and thank you for your interest in the work that we're doing in Lansing. It's, they're, so, they're just really, really exciting bills and long overdue. We couldn't wait when we found out about them to talk to you about them and, you know, kind of and to let everybody else know that they had been introduced and what was in the bill package. And since it's a short show, we're going to jump right in with the first question. Um, can you tell our listeners what the polluter pay bills include and why they're so important? That's just all the basis of the stuff. Great. Yeah. And hopefully you'll permit me just a little bit of a uh, walk down memory lane. And so Please the do. term polluter pay was really coined back in the 80s. And uh, there was so, there was a set of laws passed under the leadership of Lana Pollock, who was a state senator from Washtenaw County. And those were the polluter pay laws. And they were in place for a number of years in the late 80s, early 90s. And what these laws basically said was that, you know, if you're going to pollute Michigan's environment, you got to clean it up. If you've got a polluted piece of property, you got to make sure it's clean. And then under the Engler years, these laws were really eviscerated. They were torn down. They were weakened in a variety of ways. Of and the entire approach got changed to instead of being one where we would require polluters to clean up their mess, it was really more of a, a law that said that, well, if this pollution is in contact with people or if it's in contact with wildlife, then you need to take steps to make sure that you're preventing that exposure. And so that left... Um, a lot of corporate polluters off the hook. And it also created situations too where um, we've got more and more orphaned sites. Because what happens mm. is that these companies- Like 10,000 of them throughout exactly. Michigan. Yeah, exactly. So there, yeah. there are roughly 27,000 polluted sites we know about in Michigan and about half of them are orphaned, meaning that mm. whoever was responsible for that pollution is long gone. Mm. And our lax pollution control laws uh, is part of what has led to this, right? Part of it's our mm -hmm. legacy of industry here in Michigan, but part of it is that when you have a law that allows people to just kind of monitor their, their pollution and leave it in place, they invariably don't look for it in all the places where they should, and they invariably soft pedal that effort until they're bankrupt or dead. And so these corporations, you know, uh, leave the scene uh, as entities and they no longer exist. But their pollution and the legacy of damage that they've left in our communities does persist. And so we need better systems in place to prevent more orphan sites from becoming a problem for neighbors and taxpayers. And we need a system that holds our corporate polluters more accountable to clean up their mess in the first place so that less of these sites are left behind. And really, most importantly, so that people aren't coming into contact with this pollution, um, mm. you know, whether it's now or in future generations. We need to be thinking down the line to when we're all gone and looking Definitely. out for the health of people then as well. And yeah. so that's kind of the broad outline of how we got here to this proposal. And now we have a number of bills that we've introduced, both in the House and the Senate, that seek to uh, close some of these loopholes, that seek to improve the stringency of our environmental cleanups in a number of ways. And so, you know, I'm happy to go through those if you want. Um, and, and just to kind of run down the list as quickly as I can. That'd be great. Uh, there are, yes. there's there's uh, a couple of bills in the package that really speak to uh, increasing transparency in the process, making sure that polluters That's have to report so more information to the state about what they're finding. So important. Uh, because the public yes. has a right to know. And uh, people who are living near these sites want more information about what's happening in their neighborhood. And these uh, property owners, I think, have an obligation to share with the public about what's happening and what they know. 
Uh, and then it also gives the regulators, it gives the environmental police on the beat, so to speak, an opportunity to then engage those companies and say, well, it looks like you found this chemical over here. You know, why aren't you looking over there? And, you know, yeah. and, and try to improve the site characterization, as we call it. So transparency is a big hallmark of this package. Another big piece of it is upping the ante on how clean is clean. Because mm. um, the sad truth about environmental protection is that you know, sometimes when uh, a company leaves behind a legacy of pollution, there's no way to put all the toothpaste back in the tube. Uh, yeah. And so really what we're often talking about is how clean are we going to require them to get it before we allow them to walk away and say that's clean enough. How clean is clean is how I put mm -hmm. it initially. And, um, you know, just to give you one example of how these um, of how these things are set. Uh, it used to be that Michigan's standard for environmental cleanliness meant that when the site was left behind, it would only increase the cancer risk of people who are coming into contact with it one in a million. And that was reduced by a factor of 10 down to one in 100,000. These are the kinds of things that we want to you know, bring back that stringency, bring back that yeah. public health protection. Another good example of what we're talking about is that right now, uh, companies are allowed to use any method to manage exposure. And one of the methods that they use a lot is a method called institutional controls. And what this means is basically like deed restrictions. So say, for instance, a company pollutes an aquifer and maybe it's very, very expensive to clean it up. And so the solution is for them just to put deed restrictions on everybody's property that says you can't touch that water underneath you. That's Which is just, that is not a solution. Right, and it actually and so sounds want, pretty deadly to people. That sounds like yes. it's really probably going to harm a lot of people, right? And, and yeah, and so you know, long term or short term, maybe you do have to do that until the pollution's cleaned up. But let's prioritize in the law removal mm. of the pollution. If they have Absolutely. to do something like a deed restriction, let's make that the last resort, not an easy option, right? It should be something yeah. that's only done when absolutely necessary. Um, so those are the kinds of things we're talking about changing. There's a few other little pieces as well. So, for instance, right now, the statute of limitations can be very, very short for people, particularly when we talk about emerging pollutants. The one that comes to mind a lot right now is PFAS. Yeah. Folks didn't understand how dangerous PFAS was 20 years ago. Yeah. And so the statute of limitations, the, the clock shouldn't start 20 years ago when people first knew they were exposed to PFAS. It should really start when they first knew how dangerous that exposure was. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, we're changing some of those statute of limitations around to try to address uh, those kinds of issues. Another piece that we're proposing that's very important is a new private cause of action for medical monitoring. Let's say, for instance, that you live uh, near H the Hush Puppy factory at Wolverine Worldwide in Rockford, Michigan, just outside of Grand Rapids, and you and your family have been drinking PFAS-laden water for many years. Oh, your doctor is going to tell you, you know what? This is bad for your kidney. You might come down with kidney cancer. You should probably go get regular screenings. Well, these screenings cost 800 bucks a pop. Yeah, Who and they're not them? covered by insurance. Who should pay Absolutely. for that? Well, yeah. who should pay for that? And so they we're should. proposing a private cause of action yes. in the Senate, that's Senator Schenck's bill, uh, so that um, you know the, the, the individual can go into court and say, you know what, I want the polluter to pay for the costs of these um, you know, of these uh, of these tests. So those mm -hmm. are the kinds of things that we're you know proposing here, uh, filling some of these holes, giving citizens more information, giving them more authority to be able to go into court to fight for their own needs. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, also giving the state regulators more tools and more authority to say, you know what, you can get rid of more of this pollution. And, and yeah. we're going to require you to do so. And it's expensive because they, well, they should, there, a lot of times PFAS shouldn't even be being used. Like the stuff that they're using that ends up in the stuff, in the water and in the environment doesn't even yeah. need to be used. We've been, we've interviewed a handful of people, and they're all who, um, uh, you know, and advocates who have told us that, that a lot of times these are, these chemicals aren't even needed that yeah. end up in our stuff. But, yeah. you know, the, we have, our dear friend Andrea Pierce, she was on our show a couple months ago, um, and her mom actually was exposed to PFAS and died. And because none of these regulations, none of these laws and bills are in place right now, she's having a heck of a time holding people accountable, corporation, the corporation Absolutely. accountable. She and is. um it's devastated her entire family. You know, she it was really really devastating so if these things were already in place and maybe if they're in place soon that will actually be able to help people who are feel like they're in a hopeless situation right now fighting these corporations to get accountability
Yeah. Yeah, it's incredibly challenging to hold these corporations accountable, particularly when people have been damaged by environmental pollutants, because it's genuinely very difficult to prove that somebody's cancer, for instance, came from exactly this or exactly that. And, <laughs> uh, you know, these companies have tremendous resources to bring in all sorts of experts to, you know, um, yeah. you know, kind of fog up the courtroom and mm -hmm. uh, create doubt. And, uh, it, you know, it's really challenging for residents who don't have those kinds of resources, who don't have yeah. those deep pockets, who don't have the same uh, intense interest in, you know, protecting the bottom line of the company uh, that these companies have. And they get they get rolled over in court all the time. Um, yeah, no, she's you know. she's looking at that. That's what mm -hmm. that's what it's looking like for her. These bills would actually really help her and her family if and, they were yeah. um, if they were pushed yeah, all the way through. They would. And I completely concur. And it seems like this uh legislation would not only be retroactive but proactive as well which i think is always um a very positive way to handle situations because as you said we do have people and properties and land that's already been damaged and we also want to prevent this before it starts so with that being said how exactly will this legislation hold corporations accountable and make them clean up like all of these massive sites of contamination across Michigan. Yeah, well, there are a, a number of elements, right? I mentioned some of them already. One is giving the regulators the authority to say, you know what? you can get rid of this pollution, not just cap it and cover it up and manage yes. human exposure to it, but you can actually remove it. And we, and that, that that is one core component. Another element that I didn't mention in my initial description is one of the pieces that I think could really help prevent some of these orphan sites from continuing to fall onto the list. And that would be uh, something that we call financial assurances is what we call mm -hmm. it in, in Lansing. Uh, and this is something that we already do for landfills. So take a quick step back. Something that the legislature noticed about landfills a long time ago is that, you know, landfills have so much icky stuff and they're mm -hmm. so difficult to control that they very routinely end up leaking into the groundwater and causing big problems. Yeah. And when they cause yes. big problems, they cause problems that are bigger than the companies that own these landfills can even cover because they're just so expensive. Mm -hmm. And so what the state requires in with, with respect to landfills is uh, some sort of bonding or insurance or a line of credit, some sort of financial assurance that if there's a big problem, there is a pile of money to go after first before it becomes a problem for the neighbors and the taxpayers. And so what we're proposing in this set of polluter pay bills is uh, to extend that authority to other types of businesses, to dry cleaners, to businesses that generally have to file uh, these um, pollution incident uh, plans is what they're called. So basically we're talking about companies that are holding uh, large amounts of chemicals or uh, working with a lot of chemicals in their process, that they would have to have some sort of bond, some sort of insurance, so that uh, you know if they do have a problem, rather than just disappearing behind the corporate veil of bankruptcy, yeah. leaving that problem for everyone else and their neighbors and others. Instead, there's this financial instrument over there to, to, to use to, to, to provide resources for cleanup. You know, and that's that's super important. I mean, when we look at some of the old um, industrial sites across Michigan, you look at some of the old, you know, GM bankruptcy sites. I've got one in my backyard, the old Willow Run plant. Mm -hmm. uh, there are such okay. extreme uh, contaminants at some of those sites that the money that's been set aside to care for them, you know, may not be enough. And Absolutely. so, uh, you know, requiring that there's a financial instrument or a financial assurance there uh, uh, to go after in those cases, um, you know, is, is very, very important. Particularly when we start talking about things like dry cleaners, a lot of these smaller businesses mm -hmm. that uh, don't they necessarily use a lot of chemical sources. Yeah, they don't, and, they, and they're not, they're usually, you know, owned by pretty small entities and, and those folks retire and sell and, and they're gone. And, right. and so we need something to be able to make sure that that doesn't become a cost to the taxpayers, either in our bodies and our health or in our pocketbook either. Yeah. And so, that, you know, that's another element that I, I left out of my initial description. Absolutely. I uh, um, it's so, it, I do think that it's so important that, um, that even to the smallest businesses, to the largest corporations that these mm -hmm. bills um, really speak to all of that <laughs> because those small businesses, we had the small business here in Detroit who was um, the, who, that was an abandoned site 
and this there was green ooze leaking out. I don't know. It, I don't know if you guys remember a couple of years ago, but there was like green ooze leaking out of the building onto the freeway. I can't remember exactly yes. what it was called, but it was this terrible stuff, right? Um, and that was a smaller business. It wasn't a huge company, Co so it really makes absolutely. sense that um, that it would uh, that the this legislation would across the board protect folks um, in that way. Uh, what can people do to learn more and get involved? What can we do to help um, push these through all the way? Well, the most important thing is for people just to talk to their lawmakers about it, right? Every single person who's listening has a state representative and a state senator who represents them. If that's me, if I'm your state senator, you know, write, write my office, send me an email, uh, make a phone call, uh, say yeah. that you support this. Yeah, obviously, I, I, I help put the bills together. I've got my name as a sponsor of one of them. So uh, I, I'm clearly supportive of them. But, right. uh, you know, I, I encourage everybody to do that. And I, I always yeah. encourage folks to exercise that muscle of activism, even mm -hmm. if you're reaching out to you know somebody who, who agrees with you some folks don't want to preach to the choir but the choir has to practice too so so there's nothing wrong with that Absolutely. but also it's good to know that your constituents are supporting what you're introducing too exactly. like that yes. like that's you know like you know that you're doing something right then right when you're getting lots of calls of support exactly yes. exactly it but matters. you know for those of you who might be listening who i'm not your senator uh, uh you know reach out and and just say hey look i've heard about this legislation you know, i'd like you to support it where do you stand and mm -hmm. uh, that can be incredibly important, right? All of the legislators have regular community events, at least most of us do. I know I have regular community events where I do town halls or coffee hours, these kinds of things where folks can come out and chat with me about what's important to them. And, you know, I hold these events and I think a lot of my colleagues hold these events because we really do want to know what's important to people. And so if this yeah, is important absolutely. to you, you know, let them know, let them know that you support clean water. Let them know that you want um, more accountability for corporations that are leaving a mess in Michigan. And, you know, some of you may even be small businesses yourselves and you may be able to make the argument that I've heard several times already, which is, hey, I'm a business owner and I don't want to have to compete against somebody who's cutting these corners. I don't want to yeah. compete against somebody who isn't doing everything to protect our Great Lakes and our rivers and our, our, our drinking water. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different angles that people can come at this issue from. There's a health angle. There's, you know, an economic angle. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, there's there's a business angle. Uh, but really what, what this is all adding up to is that we want folks to be accountable and responsible. And and, and we want Michiganders right. to be healthy. We, we want them to have long, thriving lives. And we've when you've got PFAS in your water and a company that does not care, that's dehumanizing. It ruins your family, uh, generations ahead. You know, like those things are that's that's serious. <laughs> it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I would just encourage people to get involved that way. And, you know, hopefully when you get involved and you know, reach out and meet your legislator, uh, you know, that's a relationship that, that will be positive and, and you know, can, can, you can start build lots of different issues, right? Yeah. We're talking yeah. a lot about PFAS here. And one of the things I like to share with any group that will listen is that, uh, you know, I've got legislation to ban PFAS in food packaging. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't oh, know it, your fast important. food burger wrapper, your French fry pouch. Those things are all lined with PFAS. Your yeah. you know, yes. to-go container at the salad bar probably is lined in PFAS. And, and um, you know, the, one of the most powerful tools that we can use to get change, I mean, one tool is, is government action. And, and yes. I'm very interested and involved in that, something that, yes. that I do every day. But another tool is consumer action. And I think that when people know more about, you know, what's going on in our consumer economy, they can make their own choices. They can vote with their dollars, so to speak. That's right. And that's an incredibly powerful way to organize as well. Well, it is extremely powerful. It is. And it's also very, very um, hopeful and motivating to know that we have legislators that are definitely on our team and understand the plights of the community and are acting on it. Thank you for always being that that senator. Yeah, well, thank um, you for saying that. Sincerely, if you are. Words. I appreciate yeah. the kind words, but I want you to know that my, you know, a lot of my colleagues are 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 really great on these issues as well. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that is popular all across the state is clean water. That's right. And yes. it's amazing that when you talk to people, even people who have very different politics than me, right? Like I'm a very liberal Democrat. Like that's just that's where I'm at on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. right. There are a, a, 
people across the state, though, who are much more conservative than I am, who still care deeply about our Great Lakes, who still care deeply about clean water. Yeah. And this is one of these issues that really, as someone who's more of a liberal, this is a, a real entry point to conversations with folks who maybe don't agree with me on a range of issues, but this is a point where we can find a lot of agreement. And so I would encourage folks to you know, continue talking to, you know, that's another way to organize, continue talking to your friends and your family and other yeah. parts of the state, continue to talk to your coworkers and others, you know, your frenemies, whomever, who, yeah. you know, maybe isn't already on board with the idea that this is our water, right? right. And no yes. matter whether you're a conservative or a liberal, the idea that somebody else could take our water for their own personal purposes and ruin it, not just for us and our families, but for generations to Generation, come, that right. is deeply wrong. And that yeah. sets people off on all points of the political spectrum. And it, as it right. and so this is something that, um, you know, regardless of where you come from ideologically, we can win on because our water is incredibly right. important to the future of our state. And people realize that all across the political spectrum. That's yeah, right. They, Anders, we, we they love realize this water. the humanity in it. And that's across the spectrum, mm -hmm. no matter what bat financial background, no matter what political background we come from it is a humanity issue and we are humans so at the very we have sometimes we have to go to the most basic to get to a situation where you can have a consensus on fighting for something so i i do definitely agree with what you're saying um, do you have water any brings final... it? I, I've seen it across all kinds of movements, right? Water brings us together, yes, um, on a different level than any um, any other any other thing that's happening. Water brings us together. I've seen it over and over and over again. It does. Indeed. Yeah. Well, it's brought us together here today, and that's a yes. big part of what we're yes. talking about is trying to make sure that yeah, you know, when folks pollute our water or our land, that they're held accountable <laughs> and that they're required to clean that up, and that. You know, um, the types of businesses that we attract to Michigan are businesses that know that we care about pure Michigan. We care about our Great Lakes. That's and our right. Water, and we're going to hold you to a high standard and you're going to be happy to be here as a result of that. That's right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, um, Senator Irwin, for uh, being a champion of the people always. Uh, we appreciate you. Um, yeah. And and also for always, like, anytime we call to talk to you, you <laughs> You uh, respond and talk to us. Uh, so always thank you for um, for that as well. Thank you, Nicole, for always going on this journey with me. I'd like to thank the, our behind the scenes uh, person, Angelica, couldn't do this uh, show without you. And yeah, to can. all of our listeners, thank you for tuning in every week. Um, there's going to be lots of links down below for you to check out that you can just um, informational links so you can learn more about this legislation, um, please do call your uh, your representatives to uh, to get it pushed through because it would be uh, it would change people's lives. It really would. I believe that. Thank you to everyone. Um, try to look out for each other and try to stay afloat. Bye. Thanks again. Thank you. Be careful, homie. You spilling it.